Good morning, people of YouTube. So we are back again today with another fun deck profile. Uh, this is a tier one deck if you are a skilled pilot. This is a tier three deck if you are not a skilled pilot. So if you have the time and the patience to learn the ins and outs and the matchups that this deck has, this is a deck that will very much reward you. Um, this is Mastamon Turbo. This is a deck that I do not want to put the time and the effort to play at the highest level of competitive play, uh, mostly because I don't like games that go into time. However, this deck has started to change my mind once I started playing it. Um, all of the things that you can do with this deck are super fun. You can go aggressive, uh, you can stall your opponent out, and you can just play a lot of bodies out of nowhere with cards like Flaming Hell Scythe, um, you have Witchmon, you just have a lot of really, really cool cards in this list, and it's definitely making me change my opinion on the way that yellow functions as a color. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the deck profile. Uh, if you guys like this kind of content, make sure you guys like and subscribe, and uh, turn that bell on for notifications and all that jazz. But uh, we'll start at the top end and work our way down. Um, starting with the boss monster herself, we got four copies of Mastamon. This is the only level six I play in the list, and this is the only level six I think I need. Um, you are going to be recycling this card a lot, um, and just kind of just ripping through them and just recovering and playing extra bodies and the main thing to note is that whenever you get to digivolve into this card you get to put anything that is purple or yellow in from your trash on top of your security and then you get to take your security stack look at it and play a level five or lower purple or yellow digimon and then any time on anybody's turn that you play a Digimon with a card effect, you get to destroy a Digimon on your opponent's side of the field with a equal or less level. So that includes if your opponent hits like a Zwart Defeat in your security, then you just get to pop a level 7 or lower. That's dumb. This card is not limited to once per turn, which is even dumber so if your opponent hits into, like, a Witchmon and a Zwart Defeat in your security, they just get punished for it. If you Jogress into this, play a level 5, you get to pop something. And then if you end your turn by Flaming Hell Scythe, you get to pop something else with the Flaming Hell Scythe, play another body, and then pop something else. This card is dumb, and I understand why people were very excited for this card to come out. So... This is the best boss monster in the deck, and you really don't want to be using your level 5s for anything other than going into her. Uh, speaking of the level 5s, we'll go into those next. We got two copies of Lucimon Chaos Mode, uh, two copies of Magna Angemon. Uh, this would be three, but I only own two. Um, the card I would cut would be one copy of the uh, BT, or the, I'm sorry, the Starter Deck 10 Angewomon. Um, right now I'm playing three. I would go to two of this and three Magna Anja. But Magna Anja is just doing really weird things with the market right now, so now is probably not a good time to buy them. But this Angewomon is also super important. It has the inheritable effect of security attack plus one if you have a purple Digimon in play. Um, Mastamon always counts as both. So this card just makes it so that your Mastamon is putting your opponent on a timer just by being able to rip through their security. Also, this is a six cost to hard play. Um... Which is really nice, you know, giving your opponent, one of your opponent's Digimon security attack plus two will oftentimes give you the same kind of advantage the Magna Anja would um, if you're just using it to stall. But the six cost of hard play just can be more beneficial in certain situations. Most of the time, however, this card's main use is in its inheritable effect. So for the rest of the level fives, we got two copies of the BT3 Lady Devimon. Uh, the draw to discard to. This card helps us put the level fives in the trash that we need to recur with Mastamon whenever we go into her. So this is super important. And then rounding out the list, we got one copy of the new Lady Devimon from Starter Deck 10. Um, this is a really cool card because it gives Mastamon retaliation. You can kind of recur this with your Witchmons. Um, and with Mastamon herself, but if you have this under a Mastamon that's in play, then you basically make it so that all of your um, level, all of your yellow Digimon have Death Touch, 
which is just nuts. Um, making your opponent not want to swing into Mastamon is super important, but this also works for any of your yellow Digimon, so it can turn, like, um, your Gatomon into a Retaliator. It can make your opponent not want to swing over your Magna Angemon. Um, I'm sorry, it's a your turn, so it doesn't give your your Digimon the Retaliation on your opponent's turn, but everything I said still applies whenever you're swinging with your own cards, so... This is still really good. The only reason it's a one-of is because the Retaliation doesn't work on your opponent's turn, and also because Retaliation just doesn't really do much into X Antibody, which is super big this format. So, these are the level 5s that we were playing, and again, the only change I would make would be to swap an Angel Woman for a third Magna Anja. So going into the level 4s, we got 4 copies of Gatomon, uh, this card is a plus two whenever you play it, which is nuts. It also makes it so that if you evolve into an angel, archangel, or fallen angel, it costs two less. So uh, that's pretty much all your level fives. So going into any of your level fives for one memory, um, and then being able to like hard play a level five to end your turn, and then jaw crest with your, your Gatomon's inheritable, is just nuts. The one downside about this card is the fact that it costs three to evolve into. Uh, so most of the time, you're just going to want to hard play this. Um, and I guess the other downside is the fact that it has 4,000 power, so it can be popped with things like Geogramon if you leave one of these out. So just be wary of that. But uh, this is just one of the best cards in the deck, and you should absolutely be maxing this out. We got three copies of Witchmon. This card is really fun. It plays out of security, which can trigger Mastamon's effect if you have that already in play. Um, and when you get to play this card, you get to add a purple level 5 or lower Digimon from your trash to your hand. So this can help set up nice Jawgrass plays. Um, and it just gives you more aggression by being able to play it out of security. There will be times when you're going up to like 8, even 9 security. So there will be a good chance that you either have a Witchmon or a Zwart defeat in there. So that's nice, you know. You at least want to play 3 of this card. And then for the last level 4s in the list, I am playing a an Eismon engine. So I will be testing a build with the purple-yellow level 4s like Wizardmon and Black Otto. Um, but the 3 scatter mode and 1 of regular Eismon is still very, very strong. Um, even with Eismon limited to 1. You will be going through a lot of cards. And you can constantly add this card back to your hand with the Witchmon and make sure that you're discarding it with your other effects like Demi Mara or Lady Devi. So, uh, plus Eismon Scatter Mode is just really, really good at getting level 5s into your trash to facilitate the Mastamon play. So, I do like these cards. Um, they all have their place in the list. Going into the level 3s, I got 4 copies of Tapirmon. On delete and draw a card. This combo or this combined with your uh, Demi Mara makes it so that you're seeing cards early game and kind of getting the ball rolling um, nice and early, rather than after you're already dead in certain matchups like Imperial and Armor Rush. So Tapir is pretty essential. We got four copies of Gazimon. Uh, Gazimon is also super essential. Blue is everywhere in this format, and Blue plays Hammer Spark. This card stops Hammer Spark. Uh, everybody loves Rapidmon. Um, Gazimon forces your opponent to use one of their minus 5,000s on it. And if you have multiples of these in play, you can uh, possibly deny the Patamon memory gain. So I wouldn't count on it in that matchup, but Gazimon still forces the play. So it is really, really good and one of the purple level 3s that you want to be playing. The last level 3s I'm going to include in the list are things that I want you guys to consider. I have one of the Gabumon from BT2, the Inheritable Draw 2 Trash one, and I have one of the new Starter Deck Sukaimon. So, I'm not hard playing a lot of level 3s from my deck um, onto the field, so I don't know how valuable the Sukaimon is. I don't, I don't really like it too, too much. But also, unless this Gabumon is under an Eismon scatter mode, it doesn't really feel that good. So I don't know which one of these I want to play as a two of in this final slot. 
I just figured I'd give you the option of both of them. Um, try them both, see which one you like more. I'm personally leaning more towards this Gabumon than the new Sukaimon. Um, but there have been times that the Sukaimon has helped, so I don't know. I will continue to test and I will make a decision in the future. But that's it. I'm only playing 10 level 3s. The last Digimon that we are playing in the list are the three of Zort Defeats. So, like I said, you can delete massive bodies of this triggers whenever you have a Mastamon in play. Um, but you can also Digivolve this over Mastamon and, you know, pop Tamers, and then swing into something and pop bodies. So, I really like this card. This card is just really good. It continues to be really good. And it's something that your opponent has to be wary of whenever they're swinging into your security. So, that's it for the Digimon. We're going into the options and the Tamers next. Um, speaking of being wary of swinging into your security, in the option lineup, I play three copies of Chaos Degradation and three copies of Flaming Hellscythe. So, these cards are absolutely incredible. Flaming Hellscythe lets you loot Magna Angemons by giving something minus 6,000 and then being able to play a 6,000 or less body from your trash. Um, so this card can play Magna Angemon, um, Angewomon. It can even play the Lady Devimon from the starter deck if you need to get a purple um, Digimon into play. But Chaos Degradation is a card that I'm not seeing a lot of people play, but I think everybody should. So this is one of the only cards that gets around Breath of the Gods. Breath of the Gods does not say this Digimon is protected from being put into your opponent or being put into security. Chaos Degradation puts their big Uriumon, their big Alphamon, anything that they're protecting with their Breath of the Gods into their security and then trashes that security, which is nuts. Um this card just helps you win that matchup and you're going to play against that matchup x antibody is a really good deck and you are a slow roll deck so they are going to have time to set up so you will inevitably have to deal with the big x antibody stack there is no winning the game before they do it they're going to do it so when they do it you have this card and this card will win you the game i promise um Flaming Hellscythe is better against everything else. Um, I guess except Imperial, because this card will just omni-delete the Pyildramon or the Fighter Mode or anything else. Um, but Flaming Hellscythe is really good into most of the meta. Plus, you are able to, you know, play the body back, you know, get the recovery off of the Magna Anja, and then, you know, pop something with the uh, Mastamon. So, I like the 3-3 three, three split. With you playing three of this, three of this, the three Zwart defeats, the three Witchmon, and then, you know, the four Tamers and the one Reinforcing Memory Boost, your opponent has a lot of cards they have to fear whenever you're, uh, whenever they're swinging into security. So, um, the last option in the list is the one Reinforcing. Uh, this card is absolutely broken. Uh, it recovers, so that's important whenever we are triggering our Karis. And, you know, it's just a really, really good memory boost. So, that's it for the options. For the Tamers, I'm playing the one Cody and the four Kari Kamiya from BT8. I guess I'm playing five Tamers in this list. I thought I was only playing four. Um, but I did decide to bump Kari up because uh, this card is just important. Being set to three memory is key. And if you have multiples of these in play... Like, if you have two of these in play, you can activate Reinforcing Memory Boost for two. Um, you can Jawgress into Mastamon and gain memory for doing it, for having this card into play. Um, which is just nuts. Kari's essential for just gaining stray memory here and there and being able to extend your combos. Cody is really cool because it can just give things less DP, and help gain you more memory whenever you're starting your turn. If you have the Co Cody plus the Kari in play, you know, most of the time you're starting your turn with four memory. Um, I was considering cutting a Kari for a Cody, 
but starting your turn with three memory is super important in this list. So I think playing four copies of your memory tamer is a must. Um, especially a memory tamer this good. Like, this card is absolutely what this deck wants to be seeing. And then rounding out the list, we just got the eggs. I got one copy of Nyaramon. This card is really nice. If you have a yellow Digimon in play when you attack, you get to draw a card. I will be playing four copies of this card in the list that's playing, like, the Wizard Mons and the Black Gatos. Um, but in this list, I'm playing four copies of Demimera because just generically, this is still your best egg. It helps set up your ta it helps set up your trash. It helps set up your hand. Um, it's just good all around. But yeah, that's the list, everybody. Uh, this deck has a lot of combos. There's a lot to say about it. Um, and it's something that a lot of people were very, very excited about going into this format. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the, com in the comment section down below, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.